Hello, what's going on? It is Eric Polly at erpolly.com. I have been working on a 3D project, a short film, currently calling it Standbot. Uh, that might change because Standbot isn't necessarily the main character of this animation. Uh, enough about all the like specs and uh, the final details, but today we're really talking about my usage of the asset library inside of Blender. This is a new feature that Blender has added, and I am loving it. I have created an asset library with a million assets inside of it, essentially. Uh, maybe a slight over exaggeration. I'd uh, but what I'm doing is taking these assets, and now I'm going to be using them to build my scene. So, why don't we hop over to the jam? Uh, I believe that the jam is Blender. Is Blender a type of jam? Uh, let me get the Blender jam. Blender jam. That's when you have too much stuff in your Blender. Not enough liquids. Well, you need equal parts liquid to your smoothie jam. Uh, anyways, so I'm not going to be using a little car. Um, I quite, I don't quite remember what some of these things are, and uh, some of these are actually models that I have pulled from um, the web. I like using a few, most of these now. It, it's actually quite difficult to tell what I have made and what I have uh, pulled from sources like these books. I made those. This car, I made it. Traffic jump, this traffic cone, I didn't make that. No, I didn't. I could have. It's a, not, not a whole lot of verts. However, I want to have a billion assets here and uh, these are just the assets that I'm using for this particular scene. Now to start it off, nice and neat, uh, we can just start dragging and dropping these items. Boom. Got the wrong way? Yep. Rotate 180 degrees on the Z axis. Check it out. Let's pull it over here. Boom. Bookshelf. Alt D to duplicate it on the X axis. Put like a little table or something in between, leaving a small amount of distance. Hmm, burping in the mic. That's that's what you all wanted to hear. I knew that, so that's why I saved it. I, like, I bet they're gonna want some end table. Let's assume that that's actually the end table size. Rotate ninety nine zero Z. So R nine zero Z G X. Nope. Why? Every scene I seem to like um, create things on a different axis. Make it an end table. There you go. Now, it doesn't need to be that far away from everything. Out about like that. I could even, um, let's just size it by the y axis and make it a weird skinny table. Bring it back. People like to put tables all again, all up, all up against the wall. That's where I'm gonna put it. Uh, yeah. What do these items actually look like? Looks more like that. Um, though to prevent my PC from stuttering or acting out, uh, really um, freezing or crashing, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my samples way down to like 16 because when I'm in here messing around I don't really need to know the fine details I don't need to know that these walls have a noise modifier on them or a, a noise shader it doesn't really matter for placing down a bunch of random stuff now I got the basics I basics add layers for this I'm just gonna go ahead and Alt D to duplicate it on the Y axis. Let's just do that same thing. Rotate R one eight zero Z, and then rotate it one hundred eighty degrees on the Z. 
Perfect. So those are assets that you may never even see. Maybe you'll pass by this room here. And uh, I am not sure if I'm going to add doors necessarily. Sorry, I keep on flipping around the camera. I don't want to make you sick. That's not my purpose here. Now, this is the conference room. I have a storyboard on the wall. I should have uh, photo scanned it so I can show you what I'm trying to work with here. But uh, when I'm looking over here on the wall, really what I'm looking for is a reference. I like posting my storyboards on the wall for this exact reason. Now, I know that they, a robot will need to be in a conference room, and uh, the other character needs to walk by the conference room, trying to be all quiet. I don't really think doors fit the situation. That being said, this door might be also open, and then uh, the rest of these doors will probably be closed and like jammed shut. I'll put like a futuristic door on them so it doesn't really need to look much like a door. Plop in a fax machine. I think appropriate. Rotate R90Z. Cool. Cool. Uh, there. Fax machine not too far from all the other gibberish. And uh, what's normally next to a by a fax machine, maybe some file cabinet. Rotate down 90, uh, that wasn't the right direction. Rotate 90, nope. Uh, rotate 270 on the Z, wrong two. Rotate Z, why is it 90? Do negative 90, nope. R, negative 90, Z happening oh no that's right i just couldn't see it because the uh the lighting or something um i could change that uh somewhere in here depth of field cavity that's what i want so i'll be able to see the cavities meaning the indents on these items now, I'm just actually going to take both of these, grab them on the y-axis, and let's just duplicate, alt-duplicate, and that's just making it to where it's more of an instance of this, uh, this particular file. That way, if I grab it like that, it's all one file. That should save me some room later. I'm not exactly sure if that's how that works, to be honest. I just use the software. I'm not necessarily an expert on the creation of the software. Now, the file cabinets over here would be a little bit more exaggerated, right? And then uh, the... <coughs> All right. Why don't we put in a little small one just to kind of throw it off? Black. What color are the other ones? Black. That'll do. I think this has a lot more details. <coughs> Sorry, I keep coughing. Too. Uh, humans. Um, okay. That looks fine. Everything looks good. Now, I want... Really, for the most part, that doesn't need to be a whole lot of detail in here. Because most conference rooms <coughs> look pretty blank. Be dry. Um, so I'm going to start with just, really, I just need a long, big table. Doesn't need to be fancy. In fact, the less fancy, the probably the more realistic for a small office. Oh, that's um, I'm actually going to go tab, select all, and let's just size it. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? Huh. Well, hmm. One has a weird modifier on it. Buy all the modifiers. Oh, wrong order. Got to apply your modifiers in order, otherwise it'll do weird stuff. 
Now this is crazy subdivided for no reason at all. So another solve to that tab. To get out of there, I'm gonna actually decimate this thing. Decimate it. Decimate. Crazy. Doesn't need to be. I should have just turned off that subdivide. Um, obviously, much go so like point two. That's not going to work. But well, unsubdivide. How much can I go? Can I keep going? That looks still pretty table like. Well, with textures and half textures, it's just a white table, isn't it? I think it is. Let's try one more. Starting to destroy it, isn't it? So, fix it is, huh? Let's apply that. And let's save. I'm going to go into this thing. And uh, let's see what, what's the uh, deal with the material. Yeah, I don't really like that. That looks basic. Real basic. Go. There. And where are my nodes at? New select all, assign. Now it's a brand new white texture that has nothing. Nothing. Uh, let's see if I have. I just went Control Shift T using the Node Wrangler to see if I have actually some sort of wood. Um, preferably a procedural wood texture inside of my. Uh, Asset folder here of textures, and what do I got? Do I have anything to make it out of stone? But that's not even a procedural. Uh, it just has a picture, right? Uh, what is this? Cardboard? A cardboard table? I don't think that'll look right. It would probably honestly look okay. Can't remember what I've used cardboard for in this. Uh, Project for yet, uh, if if I even have, I could just use the uh, wood planks again, and uh, mess around with the noise. But that's not necessary work. Let me try the cardboard and see what that looks like. That looks actually really table-like. Perfect. Um, I can even just go over here. Multiply the size of the thing. One five by 15. Therefore creating uh, the illusion for a nice clean looking table. And uh, it does appear subdivision and everything looks quite right. Now I'm going to go back to the layout. And I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this table for now. And uh, now that I have done those edits inside of this file, that table, if I can find the right one again, is this one. This table should have all that edits, all those edits that I just put onto it. Give it a minute. Build giant. I'm going to hit the dot on the number pad. Now I'm focused on this table here. Now, I kind of like the over length. Select all. Size it by B. You're stuttering on this particular table for some reason. I think it didn't like the initial changes I had. I just short did. What did I get for eyeballing it, huh? Okay. Delete it again. Flop it back in the scene. Got the right height now. Let's place 
table next to it, or uh, place the table next to the table to get the table's height right. Goodness, golly, I want a chair. Um, for conference room, they often put in old crappy chairs, unless it's a fancy uh, building. I've been in a number of conference rooms to where they just didn't care. So I'm gonna put in garbage kitchen chairs. They have material. Save. Oh, look at it. If they, uh, if I didn't put materials on it already, I might not use. Turn the whole thing wood. Could just use same uh, cardboard. Um, let's see. Here is that the chairs now. You size it up and pop it back in the scene. It works. I delete it first. Oh, I'm deleting the wrong thing. Fax machine behind it. Oh, you know what I should have done before I started? Um, Guys, for you to be able to use all these other things. Some of these sizes obviously are going to be have to, to change. Um, so we'll, now let me uh, go in here, shift, and I'm just going to select all these items that I've been putting down because I would like them to be in a collection of. Do believe I can. Control, not shift. You know, sometimes Blender makes its own rules for shortcuts and stuff, and then sometimes it's using universal windows. I don't know. Move to collection, new collection, uh, room stuff. The caps are right and everything. It just matters that I know all my room stuff in this folder. Chair seems a bit small still, but I think it's just because it's not. And uh, went to the tab to edit, and uh, this table in particular, um, Blender's not having a suit messing around with it. Oh, that's because modifiers are reapplied. Okay, so when you mess around with your asset inside of your asset pack, apparently if you resize it in edit mode, that works. However, um, if you apply modifiers, etc., that will not happen. So, I'll remember that. And uh, let's see. Now that... Now that... We don't have to decimate it, that's kind of good. But I'm going to just use this actual table. So like right here, and uh, let's apply the origin. So that way I don't have to reapply this table back into the scene. Origin to 3D cursor, that's exactly what we want. Now, if I resize it, SZ, it will scale down According to that uh, 3D cursor, where the or at least where the 3D cursor was. Nice long conference table. Ah, but you didn't see that one coming. Uh, but I want it to be. I wanted to make sure that there will be a nice pathway for the robot to fly, uh, glide through, uh, wheel through. I don't know. He has a wheel. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna rotate this on the Z axis so it's a little bit more natural. But actually, put the th holding the wrong button. I'm gonna do the same thing to this chair. And uh, we don't need to plop it back in over and over again. If I do this, I think this will make more sense 
because um, a lot of these assets, the origin is in the wrong spot or whatever, and uh, applying modifiers does not work as far as pre-made assets. I was not aware of that. One could be... It does look like people could be sitting there now. Okay. Groovy. Now... Did I alt-duplicate that? I hope I did. Well, there's one way to check. Not... Delete that. Alt-duplicate. And the Y and Z or R Z. Let's just uh, do a little that. Alt D on the Y and let's do that again for uh, random. Uh, I'm just going to bring this over here. I'm definitely going to edit all these around, but for now, these are great placements. Uh, you got to make sure when you're grabbing these assets that you grab them on the X or Y axis. So when you hit G to grab, make sure you're hitting that Y or X. Otherwise, you could accidentally, you know, you put it over here and really what you're doing is placing your chair in the middle of the air. Uh, that's unacceptable, obviously. You don't want to do that. So in your viewport, it might look like you're doing everything right. And then you'll find out later uh, when you pull out thinking, when you zoom out, I mean, and you think that you're done, you'll uh, discover you were sadly mistaken. I don't know. This guy, uh, Alt-D on the Y, and he can be literally just in the exact same spot. And all of these, Alt-D on the x-axis and let's just do that and rotate it 180 degrees and that will appear as I love being able to just flip stuff like that and then it um, it looks you know unique um, can do that even further adding one random chair Ooh, giant one gigantic random chair. Looked all. Uh, let's see if we can get rid of that. Okay. It still looks. No. Delete and plop it back in again. And uh, by shift right click. And let's right click on the stupid thing. Origin to 3D cursor. Get up. And leave it behind. Grab it and pull it in over here. Rotate it 90 degrees on the Z. Uh, let's actually rotate it a little bit random on the z-axis so it's not quite facing but uh, that's pretty uh, pretty accurate as far as a company's um, display of chairs there's usually one random chair that they didn't they didn't have enough chairs so yep <laughs> that's one room uh, now Put down some more stuff. Now, they were probably working on laptops. Conference room, right? Definitely had a book. So at least a book. Maybe two. Rotate it. Um, perhaps a can of soda. One gigantic can of soda. Delete it. Place it again. Rotate. And there's a can of soda. 
Sitting on the table is a can of soda. And uh, over here, place random kind of stuff I have sorted on. Hmm. Not what we wanted. I think I'm going to use something else for it. That didn't need to be there. I was just kind of like grabbing random things. This is um, put a closed laptop tablet or what it is over here. Maybe put another one. That's where they keep their tablets for their meetings. These are things I think about that I don't think <laughs> necessarily translate over. <laughs> um, I thought I had pictures for the wall. Posters. I thought there were oh there's pictures in a frame. Perfect. Um Rotate 90 degrees on the Y axis, I think. What was on these things? Why are they black? Rotate 180 on the. Okay, there, there we go. And then rotate 180 on the X? Okay. And let's just size the crap out of these. Random art. Or. Office working folk. Um, if this is more office like, I suppose there would be uh, something relating to like our goal or dream big. You only get what you put in. I don't know. Nonsense. Put a garbage can, but those are like old. Crappy garbage cans that would be super weird inside. What is this? Oh, art. Uh, yeah, I bet it has a million arts. Yeah. Um, decimate it and see what that gives me. I know. I'm, it seems like a lot of the assets that I'm having to pull. Uh, it immediately altered, and that is accurate. Point one, what's that do? Much, huh? Um, well, it's too much to do to the face, and then it's also not enough. No, actually, unsubdividing. Planar might be the appropriate. I don't really want to use a photo scanned item. Uh, it doesn't particularly increase the uh, value of this animation, so I am going to use it. Put a printer over here, and uh, maybe some metal racking. Rotate that 90 degrees on the z-axis. Pull it. Okay, what's going on? Pull it this way. Hit dot on the number. In there. Oh, I was loading the material. Uh, was material view. I don't need that. I need the very bare minimum just to see what I'm doing. And uh, Alt D on the y-axis. And uh, this will pull, uh, add a detail we're looking for. Now, Alt duplicate this table, grab it on the Y, now I'm grabbing it on the uh, X. Or rotate it 90 degrees on the Z axis. And that nice looking table over here. This is great. Uh, these are all the changes and everything I've been able to make without really having to create anything. 
Everything I've put down has been created in the past. For me to use in the future. Hmm? Ow. Water dispenser. That's definitely something that belongs. Uh. Let's see, what do I want to do with this? I'm going to go tab and rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. And let's scale it down. And dot on the number pad. And. I don't know. I was going to delete it and bring it back in, but why? Just fine. However, I am going to go right here and uh, right click and set the origin to the three. And that will make it so when I scale this down a little bit, it will scale to the floor and not move. Uh, R negative 90 Z. That's what I want. And this can go right next to the front door. Door and stuff are enormous. So that is one thing I'm going to actually edit really quick. See how, how tall is a normal ceiling, right? Um, 12 feet. So let's look it up, dude. What do I got going over here? It's a web browser. It's the shape at rendering form. What am I rendering? That's for you to know and me to find out. Uh, height of standard office. Uh, rooms, building. Nine feet. Okay, so it could be really short. And oh, it can be be super short. If I want. Grab these, pull them down, and actually pull them out. This blank or blank area. And uh, I'm gonna go and tab and let's hit two and select and it's not gonna. Nope, oh, no, okay. Alt and double click on them. Now G and Z, and I'm going to grab the whole ceiling. I wanted to just clear those um, bookshelves, because that's pretty pretty normal. Those bookshelves are, what, like six and a half feet tall? Uh, depending on the size or whatever, you can get a lot of variations. Uh, I'm going to say that those... Those bookshelves are tall. These gigantic pictures will go right there. Save. And uh, but really, the, for the most part, this this is this room looks pretty good. At, at this point, I can, I can just add a bunch of uh, little details and things. Fog. I'll put fog for realism. Uh, <laughs> Whew. Let's duplicate one of these. Uh, no, wait. Uh, yeah, Alt-D, and then grab it on the Y. Grab it now on the Z. Not the Z, the X. R, Z, rotate it like that. So there is a chair in the random corner. Good, in case you're tired, you're going to go down. Um, I'm going to do another one. Grab it on the X as well. Rotate it 180 degrees on the Z, and uh, I think it'll fit right there. So there is some random like stuff. Uh, I'll probably actually even just duplicate this this table again. You know, uh, they like having matching furniture. But uh, oh yeah, did you notice that I don't have my, uh, I don't have my lightings up here in my office, so the green screen's kind of just doing its own thing. I was surprised it worked as well as it did. Anyways, I just looked over the screen and noticed that's why I bring it up. Anyways, let's plop a laptop over here. Is that a tiny little laptop? 
Yeah, there are definitely tiny little laptops. That'll that'll do, pig. And uh, maybe a laptop that's closed and not quite perfect. It really is. Can jumbo size though. <laughs> to this, so uh, I think I am gonna sign. Uh, oh, that's a book. Tablets. Um. You know, for reference, I probably should put my character in here just so I know <laughs> how big stuff is. Um, but I'll do that once I finished putting stuff in here, and then I can resize it according to him. Uh, yeah, that'll that'll do just fine. Ooh, a speaker. Um, want? Uh, let's hide the table. What? Alt H. Table. Now I'm gonna go in. Speaker. Right click down here. You know the drill. Origin a 3D cursor and size it up. And Alt H, see what that thing like. Uh, yes, tiny little speaker. Made it. Uh, so potentially, those are the speakers that you would be listening to. Um, when you are listening to the conference, they need to be a little bit bigger, huh? Alt duplicate, and I was actually just surprised that my alt duplicate did not work when I was resizing in object mode. It's only in edit mode thing. I'm learning stuff today. These are uh, some stuff I don't normally use, uh, particularly. The um, asset library is pretty new to me. I've been creating this asset library for a while, but I, I, uh, well, I wasn't really sure how it was going to work when it came time to actually utilize I <laughs> Utilize. Uh, we watched Idiocracy. Uh, if you haven't, then... I understand why what I just said was. Cups. Little cups, places. And, uh. I don't know. We don't need martini glasses. Maybe I'll put those in the bookshelves. Over, um. I don't want to put papers and stuff over here. Because that would make sense. It's next to the, uh. Printing machine. But I don't think I have necessarily paper sitting around. A, a box or a, like a cube of paper, though, is just like it's literally a cube, right? Um, I'm gonna put some like dumb stuff. Maybe a book, another book. Um. Yep, oversized books, maybe some bottles. <laughs> Not that one. I don't like the size of it. <clears throat> oh, I shouldn't have just used Oh, well. Oh, wood chair. Um, I guess I could put some more of these cups. Oh, look. Supposed to be there. Two, three cups. And uh, do I have any more junk? Uh, I'll put another closed laptop. Where are you putting it? Don't put it on the bookshelf like that. That oh, doesn't make sense. <clears throat> another laptop over there. Rotate it 90 degrees on the Z. That's perfect. 
And uh, I'll put another like keyboard or something here and like just nonsense, just a bunch of random stuff. Computer tower fit up there. Can, will, click origin to 3D cursor. I'm probably going to go through all my stuff in the asset library and reset where their uh, origin point is because that's annoying. Every single item I seem to be putting in, the origin point is wrong. And obviously, messing with it in object mode is not the way to go. Uh, more burps into the microphone. I apologize. I'm gross. <laughs> oh, that's a giant key. That resize in the right place? Please say that. Um, looks like it did. Groovy. Huge, I think. Yeah, let's place it over there. I don't think that's uh, too many verts. We'll really find out once the shader compiles over here. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's too bad. Um, I could put my little car, actually. I think I will do that as, like, a little Easter egg. I like my little uh, um, low-poly cars that I have around. Oh, oh. Uh, first, let me put it on the table. Too big. Kind of. I'm going to delete it and pop it back over. Um... There we go. That's like a Easter egg, I suppose. Let's see. Well, I kind of want to put some bottles in here, so I'm just going to resize it. Well, it's a bottle size. I'll put like one or two in here. A little too big. Here. Rotate 90 degrees on the z-axis, and then this one I will rotate negative, I don't know, 70 on the z. That way there is some junk on here, but it's not like an overwhelming amount of junk. I should just put like some cups and stuff. Big cups. Sure. I'll duplicate on the Z and let's just make another computer over here, rotate it in 90 degrees on the Z and grab it again on the Y. Plop it over here. That's, that's interesting enough. Hanging off. And it's also going through. Yeah, that looks all right. Hangs off a little bit, but uh, that's kind of how it would do in the real world, right? So let's save. Yes, I know you can't find blah 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 blah. Um, okay. I kind of want to put. Well, you know what? No, pictures don't go over here. You know why? Um, Size it way up. Size it down on the Z. Uh, size it. So now I'm not using the asset library, obviously. I'm creating an object that needs to be in here. Go way too Size it on the Y axis. It needs to be pretty darn thin. It's just a projector screen. Tab. Go here, hit three, extrude it, uh, extrude this this way. That way. Right. Then uh, let's enter. Remember that the I key. I think of what it's called. Um, intersect. 
Right. All right, so now that should be the projector screen. So let's create new, create new, new, new. And I'm going to assign this one, and it's going to be the blank white, because that's what canvas is like. Uh, the roughness actually will be up. It's not going to be shiny whatsoever. And I'm going to assign that. So this will be the uh, projector screen. The projector screen outline. I don't know. I'll know what I mean. So that's really all that matters. And it could be a little bit metallic on this one. A little bit less rough. And uh, look like a projector screen. Wouldn't even be able to see. It does need. Even it. Even it. All right, um, I saved, so let's check out how this room looks because it's got a lot of stuff in it. Dude, good, good job me looking out for me over here with these materials. I know what they look like. Uh, viewport shading, solid mode. I'm going to have to check those here in a minute anyways. So let's just check out this look. The walls definitely make it help look Oops. good. All right, it looks pretty projector screen like, right? It doesn't really need anything more than that. It doesn't, it's a very simple object, but man, it adds a lot of detail. All right, so already I'm kind of seeing that I want to grab these two, Alt-D, and grab them on the X-axis. Now grab them on the Y-axis. Now rotate them 90 degrees on the Z-axis. Now I'm going to hit dot on the number pad and take a look at it. And it's intersecting the wall. We don't want that. We also, don't want this blank space. Everybody. Uh, you know, I was going to actually duplicate this guy, actually, for that. I was going to do another set of these, um, those same file cabinets, but I'm like, well, that's going to look really samey after. So, uh, you know. They do look, office buildings look pretty generic, I guess. They'll have a lot of the same thing. Um, so I was going to, I was just about to call it done. That's how you do it, you know. You start making something and then you're like, all right, I'm done. And then you look at one little thing and you're like, oh, not, that needs an edit. Oh, also this and this, that, this and this. I'm going to put a pen. A pen. I'm not even sure if these pens look okay. It doesn't really, doesn't actually matter that much because these these particular details are the details that you notice if they are not there. That makes sense. As in, uh, if this was just a blank um, item with nothing on it or anything, the only thing you would have to notice is the item itself. Um, that's not always what we're going for. So I am, um, you know, adding some detail, not anything necessarily distracting, or at least that's my goal. And I am taking these and uh, adding a little something so your eye doesn't um, ray looking around at um, the details that you are not supposed. Um, so that's really the artist's, um, 
goal, I guess. I don't know. Or like what they strive to do is get you to, to pay attention to the beautiful things so you ignore the, um, the things that are, didn't turn out as beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Words. You know? All right, so I'm going to just add some books. I'm going to do that. Or different bottles. I'll put another laptop. That would make sense. Here, rotate it like so. I guess that doesn't really need to have any more than that. That's probably enough for like a standard setup. It doesn't have a bunch of stuff all over the place, but it's definitely definitely office. Yep. I'm grown man. I don't know why it's not resizing. Oh, that's because I didn't go to the editor. Now. Now it's resized. Okay. Yep. Um, so it doesn't necessarily look like people left in uh, distrut or anything in this scene, but there isn't really explanation as to where the humans have gone, so... I am going to want to set up multiple cameras. Scene, right? Zero. Um, uh, I was going to also release... Um, a clip earlier a render that I, uh, for this exact project actually but uh wasn't quite where I wanted it to be that'll give me the idea of when I render this but uh you well know, let's take, take a look at what it looks like on the inside uh, as you can see the uh the cardboard table and chairs look like wood that's perfect. That's what we wanted. I uh, I might actually end up replacing the wood with this oak. Put it in there and replace it with oak. Oak. Maybe I'll keep... Yeah, there you go. And I'll keep the chairs as, like, garbage chairs. Uh, there is a roof. I don't know if I made does not appear that I did. All right, that's fine. I'm going to go outside here. I'm actually going to alt duplicate. That way, if I change one, the other one changes. Uh, all the yin goes with the yang. All dang. And let's take another look at what this looks like now that. Like anything. I'm being blocked now by a little bit of roof. Now let's just check, grab it on the Z, and let's just see how high we can pull it. Okay, it was right on the. Not sure where that. This right here, I just can't really see what's going on. Overlap. Barely any, isn't there? Difficult blender. Small gap. I also don't want. I want everything. Give me. Okay. Now let's take a look at our scene. Well, I've only plopped one camera in, and I do plan on putting like 10 cameras in here. 
and switching between them and I'm really waiting until the last minute because uh, I want to remember where all the cameras are in real time. I don't want to set the cameras up and then take a break and come back and try to mess around with those cameras because it'll be hard to keep track. Um, uh, I would like to write down what needs to be done, but let's be honest, future me is just not going to do any of that. Oof, that looks dirty. Floor looks all messed up. The lighting looks pretty damn good. Even just maybe I'll turn up the light. There you go. Set up mode. Doesn't look like That looks pretty cool. Um, the ceiling and the floor look exactly the same. Uh, uh, hmm. Change. Looks really weird. Let's see. Okay. So I am actually going to duplicate this opposite I don't plan on doing it again or uh, making any changes to the layout of the rooms uh, since the items placed in really well that yes. then on the other one uh oh what is this Connected to roll plus on the number pad. Uh, shoot, I might as well just working right that until way later. Yeah, just delete it. Alt H and uh, delete base. Roll plus. Work here. Um, I'll just delete the face. And uh, let's. Roll plus. Thing that I want. And delete that. Delete all the faces. Now I can select all. Selecting both things, that's why. Ingus. Check this one, that's good. Sometimes I select two things on this at the same time on accident and then hold. Oh. Alright. I just I just replaced it with a wood plank. And honestly that's gonna change the entire look of the uh of the room. So let's go take a look at that. And uh, I'm coming up on an hour of <laughs> recording for this room. But as you can see, it's pretty much pretty much ready to go. I could just uh, this room at least I could add my characters in and they would be ready to animate. So I think next I'm going to uh, work on Getting these other rooms with a few things in them. Now it kind of looks like a, a house of Sims or something. But that's really what uh, creating a 3D scene feels like once you know how to use the software. It's kind of just like playing a game. You're just kind of like doing everything as you do. But uh, as I was saying, I uh, got distracted there for a moment. But I will... Add a few things to these rooms, at least everything that's within eye shot as you pass by. I think I'll just fill up this room. And so it'll have some things in it as you pass by, so the camera will be over here. I'll probably hide this wall temporarily so the camera can be like outside a little bit. 
Now, hopefully there won't be any outside light coming in. I think I can just... Here. Ah, there you go. Make sure no outside light gets in. Uh, for now, I want to be able to see what I'm doing. And uh, I want some light. And I will build this wall or build this room with stuff. I will close off all these areas and make doors. I will probably make one door and then I'll duplicate it on all these things using that same method, the alt, alt duplicate. Um, I believe the alien's going to start over here, so I'll make these two doors. This one is just going to be where the light's coming from. Like so. I should go in there and see what it looks like. Now, there's nothing else in here, obviously, but once I add the wall or the roof, I'm going to save it one more, one more time. And uh, yeah, the room, the light will be coming from over here. And then uh, I'll maybe I'll put a lighter light. Uh, right here and that should give it a pretty cool effect um, I'm guessing that the lighting will be um, orange uh, seems to be the, uh, the mood for the scene I might actually change the mood inside of this building to more of a blue because it's, it does more of um eerie and like uh, not quite sad, but um, definitely not a happy scene. Right. Anyways, that's where I'm at as far as uh, putting the scene together with the asset builder. And uh, if you learned something fantastic, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you want to see more, you want to hear more, you want to eat some ice cream with me sometime, uh, let me know. And, uh, you know, why don't you subscribe and uh, do all that kind of stuff? It helps me out quite a bit, um, probably more than you would ever think. And uh, I will see you on the fly, the flip, the next time. And uh, hopefully this, um, what I'm calling the Standbot cartoon, the animated short, will be out soon-ish? I'm not really sure. Um, obviously, I'm building the background, so you kind of get an idea of where I'm at. And uh, it's going to be pretty fantastical, so I'm hoping it doesn't take too long, but I do want to take some time on it. That was me doing this. Goodbye.